The highest sea cliffs in Europe and Ireland's longest coastline, Donegal's isolated landscape is seeped in history and heritage. I visit the northwest to explore some environmental issues in an area once known as Ireland's Forgotten County. Green on Alloc on the Inishowen Peninsula is a perfect place to start my journey. Called after the Celtic sun goddess, the Green On of Alloc is the group of historic monuments. The main monument is that of an Iron Age stone fortress believed to be the seat of the Kingdom of Alloc. But our relationship to the land has changed dramatically since the O'Neill kings ruled from here. From Green on Alloc, you can see Inch Island, another former stronghold for Donegal chieftains. Today, Inch Island and the lagoon are protected nature reserves, and I'm hoping to see some birds that have recently migrated from Greenland and Iceland. So I hear this has been a really big week for birds. I suppose you could liken it to a service station on a motorway, if you want to put it like that. Um, you know, the birds, this is the first, first landfall that they find on the way down from the north. I'd say it would be an incredible sight to be, if you were lucky enough to witness the, the arrival of them coming in their masses. We have about 5,000 hooper swans here at the minute. They're one of two migratory swans that come here. We have Buicks and, and hoopers, but it, it's a really important sight for those. Andrew explained that the Inch Wildfowl Reserve is unique as you will not see these threatened birds in such huge numbers anywhere else in Ireland. The greatest challenge of such a sanctuary is achieving balance between public access to the walks and conservation. With over 650 miles of coastline, Donegal is perfectly located for the creation of local, sustainable industry. Martina, why is Donegal ideally suited to ecotourism? By its very location, Tanya, it's a rural location, a rural landscape, and of course agriculture would be hugely important uh, to Donegal, and, and we've seen that through, through the decades. And that whole area of ecotourism, that really all lends itself extremely well to Donegal. Intensive farming has changed the way we grow food, but some farmers are taking a step back in time with a more sustainable approach. I'm going to visit Ireland's largest organic farm. We will be lucky here in that our land, as it was reclaimed from the sea, has high levels of magnesium because it's full of seashells that are breaking down over years and years and years and releasing that magnesium into the soil as time goes on. Do you think that it's possible for Ireland to go back to the way we were and just go completely organic again? Personally, I do think that we, we, we can go back to organic and, and label Ireland as, as, a, as an organic food producing country. Most farmers would, would have the belief that, you know, they're, they're custodians of the land and we're passing it on to the next generation. Um, so I think there's, there's a market there that can be looked at and increased as time goes on. There's a few farms in England that have gone organic, from very big farms, and they, they integrate it with, with, with tourism by doing, you know, their backpacking holidays where you can come and stay and do some work on the farm and then go to the next one. It's a great idea. Or ecotourism can be done. It has been done elsewhere. It can certainly be done here. Some of the newer initiatives in the Northwest include a food coast trail and the Donegal Harvest Festival which links restaurants with local food producers. I visit Harry's Restaurant in Bridgend, which recently won a Board Bia Award for its use of locally sourced produce. In the last five or six years, we've turned it into a local food hub. That means sourcing throughout any show, in particular all the fish, rare breed porks, rare breed lambs, cattle, hanging all the meats ourselves, collecting all the fish straight from the boats, adding organic vegetables from Green and Farm and White Oaks and all these good people around us. In any show alone, over 30 food providers. To be honest, our situation isn't the normal city centre or harbour or country estate. We are in a border village in Bridgend, so we needed a reason for people to come here. The fact that it's local, that it's gathered that morning and we can put it on the plate that night, I mean, how special is that? Thank you. After lunch, Danny took me to visit one of his local suppliers, John Hamilton in Inishowen, who has an organic pig farm. 
know, somebody came in to Harry's restaurant, eating my pork, meeting me on the street and saying, hey, we ate your pork last night in Harry's, and it was absolutely fantastic. And has that happened? For a farm, that happens all the time. Working together like this is the foundation of a strong local economy. Before leaving Donegal, I had to try its famous surfing for myself. Donegal is now well known on the world surfing map, attracting thousands of visitors each year. At Ballyliffin Beach, I met with Daniel Galana, an Australian surfing instructor, for my first surfing lesson. Back toe, and put your front foot into the middle of your two hands, stand up and turn sideways. And hopefully you'll be surfing towards the beach. What made you want to come over to Ireland when the surf must be so cold here? Um, the waves are really good and there's not as many people in the water, but it, um, people are starting to cop on to that, how good it is in Ireland, so hmm. there's getting more people all the time. Like the surfing in Australia, it's good, but it's, here it's just as good by the weather. Daniel is spearheading a new initiative that combines surfing and environmental education. I'm just going to ask you, would you be interested in doing a wee clean up on the beach? Yeah. yeah. Just to keep our coast yeah. clean. Did you guys know this was going to happen? <laughs> I had a gorgeous day in Donegal. This place is absolutely beautiful. I've seen so much, and now I'm going to take one last surf. My visit to the Northwest has highlighted the vital role conservation and local connections can play in building and sustaining a local, self-sufficient economy. In our next episode, we'll be all over Ireland discovering what challenges we face with our most important natural resource, our water. And we'll see what the future holds.